Danger Dolan. From drunken on air tomfoolery to aggressive political debates, we count 15 of the most uncomfortable celebrity interviews of all time. Number 15. Ernie Dingo vs Carl Sanderlands In 2008, an Australian radio interview degenerated into toxic name calling. The interview, which took place between TV personality Ernie Dingo and Today.fm host Carl Sanderlands, was to promote Dingo's new show Outback Wildlife Rescue. However, it was apparent that Dingo was on the back foot from the start and things quickly turned personal. Sanderlands doesn't have the best reputation and it certainly seemed like Dingo had preconceptions about him going in. It's likely the interview was a contractual obligation. Dingo's contempt for Sanderlands is revealed when he calls him a commercial wanker. He goes on to say that Sanderlands is over the top and suggests that he doesn't care about animals. Sanderlands matches Dingo tit for tat and, in typical shock jock fashion, avoids the high road, squeezing in a final scathing remark before shutting the interview down. What a cockhead you turned out to be, Ernie. Number 14. Kristen Stewart on Letterman. So in 2010, she appeared on The Late Show with David Letterman to promote the third Twilight film, Eclipse. Now, Stewart is not a natural interviewee, and after a few rookie mistakes, unwittingly became Letterman's plaything. You can see her growing more and more uncomfortable as the audience feasts on her accidental double entendres. Letterman, exposing a bit of a cruel streak, subtly mocks Twilight, then foists a weird angry dad lecture on Stewart after she confesses to owning a pet wolf. He actually lectures her about how farmers lose livestock to wolves, and Stewart is just sort of like, um, yeah, okay, that sucks. I still love my wolf, though. Uncomfortable viewing. Number 13. Bruce Willis vs Magic 105.4 yippee ki -yay. don't look now, but it seems the enemy planted a bug up action star Bruce Willis's ass during the promotional radio interview for Red 2. Right from the start, Willis is entirely disinterested in reporter Jamie Edwards' questions. This part is not acting, Willis sulks. The fun part is over, we're just selling the film now, sales. Edwards goes on to ask him how he would sell the movie to him. I wouldn't, says Willis. I would slash my hooves. You heard it here first, guys. Bruce Willis is part bovine. Trying a different tactic, Edwards quotes a line from the movie about the secret to keeping women happy, then asks if it's proven true in Willis' experience. Willis' deadpan reply, no, that's just a line in a movie. In a last ditch effort, Edward asks Willis if he enjoyed the film's car chase scenes and receives this warm fuzzy response. I'm thinking about driving right now. I can hardly keep my mind on this interview. I'm thinking about driving up the M1. You have some great questions here, Jamie. Great chat. Number 12. Mark Wahlberg on The Graham Norton Show so In 2013, Marky Mark Wahlberg appeared on British talk show Graham Norton to promote his latest film Broken City. Norton and producers got a little more than they bargained for though when Wahlberg overindulged on the unset wine. Midway into the show, Wahlberg completed his seamless transformation into his jollier, drunken alter ego. Drunken Mark Wahlberg's hilarious antics included upstaging everyone, playing with the host's nipples, and aggressively flirting with comedian Sarah Silverman while married. Wahlberg went arguably too far during the show's signature closing skit, The Red Chair. He flipped the chair lever three times before the audience member could get even the beginnings of her story out. Talk show whiplash at its best. Number 11. On March 31st, 1994, Madonna's appearance on The David Letterman Show became one of the most infamous television interviews in history. Letterman inadvertently sets the interview's course when he refers to Madonna's sex life during his introduction and then badges her about kissing a stranger in the audience. The way he introduced me was derogatory, Madonna said, so my whole thing was, okay, let's say you want to play it, you cannot beat me at this game. Madonna made Letterman squirm with her provocative and suggestive behavior and by requesting he smell her underwear. She used language that would make Mother Teresa blush, including 14 F-bombs, and refused to leave the stage. The episode received numerous complaints and was the most censored show in American talk show history. Number 10. John Lydon, aka former Sex Pistols singer Johnny Rotten, lived up to his stage name when he hurled abuse at Australian TV presenter Carrie Bickmore during a 2013 The Project interview. The veteran punk rocker exploded 
did when Bickmore asked for his thoughts on Margaret Thatcher's death. He repeatedly shouted at her to shut up, saying, Listen, when a man is talking, do not interrupt. The interruption Lydon perceived was because of an alleged satellite delay. Lydon finished up by lecturing Bickmore and her co-host about manners, which is funny because irony. Number 9. In 2013, Zombieland star Jesse Eisenberg copped criticism for calling to task blogger Romina Puga's poor interviewing skills. Puga opens with a question about Eisenberg's Now You See Me co-star Morgan Freeman. She refers to him as Freeman, causing Eisenberg to interject, Freeman? Who are you? What, do you want a baseball team with him? Eisenberg then teases Puga for writing her admittedly simplistic interview questions on her hand. Puga claims to be offended, but is smiling throughout. To the naked eye, the pair's banter resembles flirting, but many viewers interpreted Eisenberg as rude. It might be fair to say in this age of fluff interviews that we're unconditioned to see Eisenberg's blunt and dry-witted answering style. Eisenberg's critics drew parallels to egotistical Facebook founder Mark Zuckerberg, whom Eisenberg famously portrayed in 2012's acclaimed The Social Network. Reports say these critics have unfriended him. Number 8. Rosie O'Donnell and Tom Selleck So in 1999, mustache growing extraordinaire Tom Selleck appeared on the Rosie O'Donnell show to promote his new movie The Love Letter. But O'Donnell, who is a passionate socialist, appeared to have other ideas when she brought up Selleck's affiliation with the National Rifle Association. Selleck gracefully declined to comment, explaining that he didn't see himself as a NRA spokesperson and felt the contentious issue was inappropriate for an entertainment interview. O'Donnell, however, persisted, explaining that Selleck as an NRA associate ought to take responsibility for the recent gun-related mishaps in the media. The interview then curled into awkward source. Number 7. In 2009, the notoriously grouchy Harrison Ford appeared a little worse for wear during his interview on the Conan O'Brien show. The Indiana Jones star wore a vacant expression and spoke in soft, measured drawl. He also stoked the felt arm of his chair for pretty much the entire interview. Ford is delightfully loopy during this interview and fails to recognize that the joke is on him much of the time. When Conan asks if he would ever like to be in a stupid comedy, Ford endearingly enthuses, are you kidding? I love stupid. Ford then makes fun of K-19's title, the very movie he's there to promote, and when given a thousand dollars to reveal a tidbit about Star Wars Episode 7, confirms with a straight face what everyone knew. I hear they're making another one. Number 6. 2009 was the year Joaquin Phoenix, brother of River Phoenix and star of Johnny Cash biopic Walk the Line, attempted to transform himself from Hollywood A-lister to scruffy bearded rapper. It was an unlikely reinvention and he was heavily mocked for it. Phoenix's appearance marks one of the most memorable Late Show episodes in the show's over two decade run. Making fun of guests is kind of Letterman's shtick, and it proved open season for him when mumbling, homeless looking Phoenix stepped out on stage. Phoenix's bizarre appearance was ultimately revealed as a stunt for his mockumentary, I'm Still Here. The film sought to deconstruct vapid celebrity culture, with the Letterman interview forming a central scene. Crucially, Letterman did not know the interview was a piece of performance art. His barbed comments are a hundred percent genuine. Number five. Does Sean Connery prefer things shaken or stirred? Slapped, apparently, at least according to his 1985 interview with Barbara Walters. Walters brought up the issue in reference to an earlier interview Connery had given. During a 1965 Playboy interview, Connery admitted he believed slapping a woman was warranted and justified if they were acting disagreeably. I think a man has to be slightly advanced ahead of the woman, Connery was quoted as saying, I really do, by virtue of the way a man is built, if nothing else. Connery confirmed to Walters that he still holds the view and the surrounding temperature goes from brisk to frosty. Number 4. Merlin from Big Brother Australia So in 2004, Australian TV viewers were enjoying a fourth season of Big Brother. The formula was well known, a housemate was nominated, votes were cast and the evictee emerged for an interview during a live elimination show. So far, these evictions have unfolded predictably. That is until left-wing activist Merlin Luck emerged from the Big Brother house, outraging viewers and producers alike with an unexpected silent protest. This kind of thing was unprecedented in the show's history, so the host and producers clearly had no idea what to do. As they scrambled to fill the hour and salvage their show, Merlin stood silent on stage with a taped mouth and a sign that read, Free the Refugees, which he'd concealed in the Sonian pocket of his t-shirt. 
Merlin was protesting the inhumane treatment of asylum seekers who were being held against their will at Australian-run detention centres. Locke, who attracted the ire of most of the reality TV watching nation, said he did not regret the negative attention and was grateful to have brought the issue to national attention. Number three, this is one of the most famously awkward interviews of all time. Legendary interviewer Michael Parkinson tries to get reserved Meg Ryan, who, by her own admission, despises the limelight, to open up. Ryan is polite and does her best with what is no doubt an uncomfortable line of questioning, but Parkinson probes on, seemingly determined to make her crack. Consequently, Ryan becomes frosty and uncommunicative, which then makes Parkinson more aggressive still. The whole thing ends with a big old explosion of awkwardness, with Ryan requesting they wrap it up. Number two. In 2001, illusionist David Blaine appeared curiously vacant when he appeared on breakfast news show GMTV. The show's host, Eamon Holmes, asked several questions about Blaine's act, but received only brief mumbled answers and a chillingly empty stare. When Holmes asked whether Blaine identifies as a magician or illusionist, Blaine replied that he's just a showman. His creepy stare seemed to cross dimensions, but Holmes, who was being hung out to dry on national TV, remained unamused. Towards the end of the interview, David Blaine raised a hand to reveal a drawn-on eye in the center of his palm. When asked what it means, he uttered, protection from death. Some speculated that Blaine was attempting to hypnotize an oblivious Holmes. Others suggest he was on drugs or pulling a stunt. Either way, it made for a bizarre and uncomfortable viewing experience. Number 1. Tom Cruise is no stranger to controversy. Everyone remembers the time he used Oprah's couch as a jumping castle. But it's the interview he gave with the Today Show's Matt Lauer that had our discomfort meters peaking. In June 2005, Cruise and Lauer had an extremely intense exchange during a sit-down interview. Psychiatry and Scientology were involved. Never good dinner time discussion topics. Promoting film War of the Worlds at the time, Cruz completely flustered, criticized friend Brooke Shields for taking antidepressants and called Lauer glib. The men have since put the incident behind them, but it certainly didn't help Cruz's reputation at the time. That's it for this countdown. And have a go!